Hi there, Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glen Bervey Folk Duo. Welcome to Lesson 10 in our series of How to Learn the Bagpipes. In Lesson 9, we covered the first tune in the College of Piping Tutor Book 1, which was Scots Wahey. Today, we're going to cover the third beginner tune, in the National Piping Centre Tutor Book, which is called The Barnyards of Delgati, or The Barnyards of Delgarty, uh, to give it its other pronunciation. It's a nice beginner tune. The college only introduced grace notes in this tune, so there's not a lot of work to be done. It's a two-parted march in 4-4 four -four time, and is taken from a type of song known as a bothy ballad, from Aberdeenshire. This tune is in chapter 8 of the National Piping Centre book and it's on page 24. You'll see that in the National Piping Centre book in chapter 8 there are another two tunes with no grace notes whatsoever and they're a very useful introduction to first tunes. I'll show you the layout of the barnyards of Delgaty and then as with Scots Wahey, we'll learn it phrase by phrase. It shouldn't take us too long, there's nothing really too complicated in this tune. You may have noticed that every note gets one beat each, which is really nice and simple, with the exception of the note at the end of each line, which gets two beats. In the National Piping Centre book, there is also a second version of this tune, that's at the back of the book, which employs the use of long and short notes or dotted and cut notes. The version at the back of the book is much more faithful to the actual song, but don't forget that this version is intended to help you learn your first tune with embellishments. It's a nice tune, I've used it myself uh, for several years actually as a first piping tune. So conveniently, the phrases or sections of this tune can be divided into two bar sections. That's not always the case with phrases, sometimes they're a bit shorter than that, sometimes they're slightly longer. But in this case, they're conveniently two bar sections and over and above that in the main eight notes at a time. What we'll see when we start the tune, the first phrase is this. Now, what you'll have seen there is I made my G grace notes very big indeed. Please don't forget, the grace note always comes before the theme or main note. We're going to be changing notes here and sometimes changing notes with a grace note. So if you use the bigger or longer G grace note, this will help you to move fingers underneath the grace note into the correct position without crossing or playing any extra notes. So let's have a look at what we have first. To start the tune, we're going to be playing a G grace note on F. However, normally the G finger would be, the G grace note would be the single G finger. But in this case, we're only moving from G to F. So it's perfectly competent 
to start with the full high G, that's three fingers off the chanter. Thereafter, to produce the G grace note on F, it's a simple step to placing the G finger down, and that's your G grace note on F complete. Let's have a look at the first phrase again. Now, most of that is relatively straightforward. Where you may encounter a slight challenge is moving from the second note F to the G grace note on E. Because when you move from the F, the G finger must come up ready for the grace note. At the same time, the F finger travels down so that when the G grace note comes back down in the chanter, you're making that G grace note on E. So there's a bit of this stuff going on. But please take your time. Let's have a look at the phrase again and see how we do it nice and slowly. Please pause the video now and practice that phrase. The second phrase is seven notes instead of eight, it's still two bars, but the last note, instead of being one beat, is two beats. The second phrase goes like this, again starting with the G grace note to F. My E got a little bit more than two beats there, uh, but it, it does get two beats in the tune. So again, we've got the G grace note with, with the full three fingers to F, E, then G grace note to D, a fair bit of movement there, top hand to bottom hand. Low A, G grace note to B, connecting note, although still a full beat, of D, and finally... The two fingers moving up and the D being replaced for low A in the bottom hand and the G grace note replaced on the E for two beats. Let's try that again. Play this nice and slowly. Don't worry too much about getting the notes exactly one beat or two beats. What we're looking for is correct fingering, correct note formations, no crossing noises, and some semblance of a tune in there. Please practice that second phrase now. Now we've practiced the second phrase, let's think about putting the first line together. Starting with the three fingers, and replacing the G for the G grace note to F. <laughs> Moving on to the second line. The good news is that this first two bars of the second line in the tune are exactly the same as the first two bars in the first line of the tune. So what we're going to do is practice the whole line. You'll find that when we get to bars three and four, there's more movement on the top hand than there has been before. However, there's less grace notes, so it shouldn't present too much of a problem. So starting from the G grace note to F. Two beats on that D again. Nothing really in there that requires any further explanation. 
Just be careful when you're moving from the low A at the end of bar 2 to the G grace note on D that you manage to move all these fingers as one and you form a correct D before the G grace note comes back down. Please pause the video and practice the second line of the Barnyards of Delgaty. Now, the uh, next logical step then would be to put the whole part together. Remember that this is a body ballad, it's actually quite a cheery song and actually quite a filthy song. I'll leave you to find that out yourself. Um, but let's have a look at the first part, that is to say the first two lines of the tune, played in full. Careful towards the end, bar 3 of line 2, moving from the D to the F, guard carefully against crossing noises in that movement. The second part, normally the second part, that's just to say lines 3 and 4, normally the second part would be some form of chorus for the song. The song only consists really of the melody of lines 1 and 2, there is no chorus as such. So this is purely a piping addition. The good news of uh, part two, that is to say lines three and four, is there's actually only one bar of a difference from part one. The bar which is different is bar one, funnily enough, so that's all the learning we have to do in lines three and four. We start again with a G grace note, to F, high G, high A, and all the way from high A to low A. Be careful coming from high A. You have three fingers to get down as one to sound a nice clean low A. Thereafter, G grace note to B, D, G grace note to B again, and low A. And the rest of the tune either repeats what we've just done or phrases or bar sections from lines 1 and 2. Let's have a look at the first phrase of the second part. I'm going to do that again for you. Please pause the video and practice the first two bars of line three now. I hope you did okay with that. I think having mastered lines one and two, that shouldn't really present any problems. It really is a, a nice simple tune. So, we're not going to do any more phrases because we've now covered all the learning there is to do in the tune. So what we're going to have a look at is the full length of lines three and four or part two of the tune. Taking things very easy, using big grace notes to transition between notes and give ourselves time to form a proper themal note. Remember, not to play an extra themal note before the grace note. You can hear these extra notes coming in there. Now, to counteract that, all we have to do is play a nice big G grace note and make sure that that comes first before the themal note. The second part then, from the G grace note on F.
Now, if you've played other tunes before, other pipe tunes before, you may have noticed that we do in fact repeat the parts. This tune is in 4-4 four, four time, and almost without exception, we do not repeat the parts. So it's a nice, simple matter of playing the tune from top to bottom. Let's have a look at the tune in full. I'll then let you practice that, and just to cover the whole of chapter 8 thereafter, I'll very quickly play uh, the other two tunes con uh, contained there. So the tune Barnyards of Delgate. Now, please pause the video and practice the full tune, the Barnyards of Delgate. What we've just found, in fact, is that I am completely mistaken and that there's only one tune in Chapter 8, which is quite convenient. We will close the lesson there. Uh, please enjoy the Barnyards of Delgate. Remember that uh, it does go a lot faster than that once you get up to speed. Don't be, get in, be in any rush to bring it up there. Uh, now that's it in 4-4 four, four time, of course. The actual uh, song and the normal version of the tune is in 2-4 time and again is contained at the back or the rear of the National Pipe and Centre Tutor Book 1. That was Lesson 10. Thanks very much for bearing with me. I hope you're not too disappointed that we lost two tunes after all. They are in fact contained in Chapter 7 of the National Pipe and Centre Book and we probably won't do them. In the next lesson, Lesson 11, we will pick a beginner tune from Robert Wallace's instruction book and in the meantime, I'm Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook at Falkirk Piping and Glen Bervy Folk Duo. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like these videos. It costs you absolutely nothing and it boosts my figures. Thank you very much.